Hello and welcome to episode 9 of the Updates Update. I'm Ollie, CEO of Updates Media and this is... Hi, I'm Owen. I'm the Business Development Manager here at Updates Media. So, uh, load of new features this week, absolutely loads happening in the world of social. Uh, first, everyone, uh, everyone's favorite TikTok. So they have officially launched their um, TikTok for business platform now. So on there, you can start to look at the different products and services and ways of advertising through that channel. So you can do um, branded effects, you can do trending hashtags. So there's loads of different stuff that you can do, but it's, uh, it's now been like a, a platform officially launched by TikTok. So do go and check it out. Um, Interesting to see how brands will be using that, but obviously with so much um, reach, especially to the younger generation, it's a hugely, hugely powerful platform. Um, TikTok as well have actually shifted more into the education space, which is quite an interesting move. So they're basically paying um, creators to do more educational content. So um, I've read a report about Rachel Riley from Countdown starting to do maths-based educational content on TikTok, which is a really fascinating um, development for that platform. Uh, now on to Instagram. So uh, before you could only create Instagram ads by linking to the Facebook ads network. However, they've now just changed that so you can create Instagram ads without having to uh, link to Facebook ads manager. So again, just a, a bit of a, a, an easy development, making it more accessible to launch um, Instagram only adverts. And then Facebook to, well, to, to, um, Two major updates really. The first one is uh, they've launched an app called Forecasts where you can basically go on and predict the future. Um, so you go on and you decide what you think is gonna happen and then people can then vote on it and discuss. So quite an interesting way of deciding or kind of forecasting what's gonna happen in the world, which hey, right now, I guess nobody really really knows. Um, so maybe go on Forecasts and have a look what other people are thinking. Uh, and then finally, um, well, I'll come on to it in, in, in a little bit in the video, but basically that Facebook have been under so much pressure recently around hate speech and fake news um, that they've launched a, uh, a new feature just so it basically warns you if you're gonna post content that's over three months old. So say it's a new story and you just reshare if it's over 90 days old, then it will just come up with a warning saying, you sure you want to share this? So basically to stop this like old news re, um, resurfacing on the platform over and over again. But we've got a lot more on, on that after, uh, after Owen talks us about um, things we've been enjoying this week. So what we've really enjoyed this week, uh, it's not from any political standpoint, it's purely for its use in social. So this was the Donald Trump rally in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Um, so allegedly thousands of TikTok users and K-pop fans um, all came together and, and bought out hundreds of thousands, well hundreds or thousands um, of tickets to the rally uh, as it was due to be the biggest um, gathering uh, in America um, for like 120,000 people uh, in the box centre. Um, so to boycott it, um, the TikTok users obviously shared it, spread it, everything across TikTok um, to get as many of these tickets sold or they bought them themselves so that Obviously, they'd, it'd be empty there, which it did happen. Um, so they even blocked out spaces outside um, for reserve spaces um, for all the tickets that have been bought and cancelled certain campaign plans due to this. So this just really shows the sheer power um, that obviously like TikTok, any kind of social platform can have when you use it. Thanks, Owen. So um, things that we've been thinking about this week, uh, well, nothing's dominated the news more than the advertiser revolt on um, on social and on Facebook in particular. So um, basically Patagonia and North Face came out and said that we're not going to put any um, advertising on Facebook for the month of July and just basically boycott um, advertising on the platform. This has been followed up by the likes of Starbucks, Coca-Cola and Unilever. So it's absolutely huge in terms of the impact it's gonna to have to uh, the Facebook platform in, in July. Um, they basically have just seen how little Facebook are responding to hate speech and, and that kind of um, content that's appearing on their platforms. And I know we've been here before, um, but it does seem like Facebook is changing its ways uh, a little bit. So. Um, just yesterday, um, well, what time we're recording, they, uh, Zuckerberg came out and said that they will actually 
um, label content. They won't remove it, but they will label content that goes against their policies and their terms. Um, so again, they, they don't want to start removing content because they don't want to be seen to be a publisher. They want to be a platform. As soon as they're a publisher, they have to get regulated and that leads to, to all sorts of problems for the platform. But they will now start to label content that violates its terms. Um, they will also ban adverts from um, political parties and, and anyone basically that does promote hate speech. Um, so that is a big move that they are ac actively cranking down on, um, on hate speech on the platform, especially through the ads network. But it's a, it's a huge move um, by some of literally the biggest brands and probably the biggest brand advertisers on the social platforms to come out and actually boycott advertising on the platform for, for one month. It looks like Facebook are starting to do um, some, fix, uh, some fixes um, of, of the platform, but again, they are very conscious that they don't want to be, uh, don't want to be regulated for, for the type of content. But it is, it is, again, an ongoing talking point. So we've seen during coronavirus that even digital ads, if you use Google, uh, Google's ad network, for example, you can have block lists on, um, on particular pieces of content that you don't want your ads to appear next to. So coronavirus, for example, was, um, was actually a, a, a term used on a lot of advertisers' block lists. So publishers couldn't actually monetize that, that particular content. Um, so it is really quite interesting now about where is it safe for your advertising to be seen and it's something that's always going on in in our minds in terms of when we run our um, adverts for, for our clients but also when people run um, paid advertising through Birmingham updates we don't want their content to be seen next to um, any sort of negativity so just really do think about next time you go to advertise make sure that you're very comfortable where your ad is going to be seen and make sure that it really does align with with your brand uh, and, and values so yeah i can't imagine this conversation is going to stop anytime soon but it's just really fascinating to see how the social platforms are now actively responding because the pressure is beginning to grow from the advertisers so campaign of the week this week comes from our friends over at electric house that own on the tools so on the tools are social pages um that focus around the construction industry now everything's getting back to normal, people are getting back to work, etc. So the government um, obviously have to push out safety messages for each of these industries. So they task on the tools with doing so. So instead of creating their own content, the, like the government doing it, on the tools know they have a huge social following across that sector in that industry. So they were tasked with, um, obviously with creating these messages. So it's kind of really authentic. Um, so they're creating their own content and it shows that they really know what works with their audience. So yeah, well done guys. Awesome, thank you Owen, and yeah, massive shout out to uh, to the team at Electric House. I was uh, lucky enough to sit on a panel with um, Abby, who's head of social at Electric House the other day, and yeah, they're doing some absolutely incredible things in terms of um, running the, the communities that, that they own. Um, so that's it from episode nine of the Updates Update. Hope you're still enjoying these videos, and look forward to catching up with you soon. Cheers.